right, good afternoon folks. This is Ferris Slim with Trade With Text. Today we're gonna to be doing another chart prep video uh, for the week of September 14th. So this is the week following Labor Day, right, not the week of. Um, this past week was a short week. We had four days, right, to make some money. And hopefully the video from last week helped you guys bank, right? Basically what we do in these videos is we talk about different tickers that we like and what we're looking for from them in order to be fully prepared for when we trade during the upcoming week. Okay, we do have other educational videos on the YouTube channel, but that's not what we're doing here. Okay, we're gonna focus on profiting. Now, one last thing I'll say before we get into it. Last week we talked about three momentum stocks. Okay, and then the big names. Out of the big names, they did exactly what we thought they'd do. They slowly faded down. You can kind of see that from the S&P here. The three momentum stocks all banked, all hit targets one and two. So if you did make money off of that commentary, first off, congrats. Second off, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we put out these videos regularly and you can actually click the notification bell next to the subscription button that alerts you every single time one is posted. So you don't need to sit around your house wondering, man, I wonder if Ferris actually put up a video today. It's up and you can be notified by it if you click that button. Okay, now let's get into the list here because I wanna talk about some of these charts. Uh, we're gonna start it off with the NASDAQ and we're gonna go with futures because that's how we annotate our key levels, right? If you don't know what futures are, don't worry, right? We're gonna keep it simple. Then we're gonna talk about Apple because we always like to use one big play to gauge the movement of the major index. And we're gonna talk about two other momentum plays, one being NKLA, which I'm sure everybody and their mother wants to talk about. And the other one being a gold ticker, which I'm not gonna tell you guys till we get there. All right, so the patient ones are rewarded. But um, NASDAQ, just to kind of kick it off, had a pretty interesting week. Actually, the NASDAQ, if you look at the numbers, underperformed big time. And it's because these tech stocks were just moving up on air for so long that after this initial pullback, the second week of selling pressure, right, which was this past week, was a lot harder on it than it was on other indices. And, you know, I'm sure some of you guys are looking at your long-term portfolios and you're saying, Ferris, this is nothing new, but it is still significant that the NASDAQ is exaggerating the range because normally we would be talking about the S&P here, right? And what I'm pretty much telling you is that yes, the S&P outperformed last week. No, we're not gonna watch it closer than the NASDAQ. This should be your go-to index because it's exaggerating the range, right? Because it's more exciting. For traders, we want range and volume, and this is still delivering it, okay? Unfortunately, it was a short week, so we didn't get all that much volume. We were expecting fireworks, and it was more or less a slow fade, right? Um, but bottom line, NASDAQ did close lower, right? This was day one, two, three, four of the week, so we closed lower from this close, okay? And if we're kind of just trying to keep it simple, it did defend the low from Tuesday. Okay, so I told you guys I'm going to try my best to keep this simple because as you can see, I got so many levels here. It looks very hectic. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not going to delete them and then redraw them all up for when I'm actually trading. I want to keep them up so there's a degree of transparency. But basically, what happened last week is we had very mixed volume, right? This is actually a glitch from Thinkorswim. Very mixed volume, up and down, red and green. And we got rejected at a key moving average. So the NASDAQ got rejected right here at the 8 EMA and then went back down and retested that low from Tuesday and there was just not enough volume to break lower. So ultimately, bears won the fight. There's no getting around that. Bears won the fight, bulls were just absent for the most part, but they barely held on by a thread off of this low from Tuesday. Okay, and that's Tuesday the 9th to be exact, all right? So we're going into Friday. We know that the markets got rejected at resistance. We're thinking this is gonna be a big down day, but again, there just was not enough volume to support that. So out of the things that we've talked about here, this Tuesday low being at 10,000, 935.25, I have it in white so that it sticks out a little bit more. Okay, eight EMA in pink. Those are the two things with regards to price that we've talked about, other than just bear slightly winning the fight. Um, other than that, the other thing that has been mentioned is volume. And these are the things that I'm looking for going into next week. So if you're saying, Ferris, do you think the markets are gonna go down? You didn't give a definitive answer. Rub your crystal ball for us. No, I'm not rubbing any balls out here. We are just talking about price. 
So 8 EMA, 10,935.25, those are the lines, right? We always like to define what is giving us the range. That's giving us the range here. So until one of those breaks, we don't get significant action. And I don't want you guys to be biased whatsoever going into this week, because I have an idea of where we're going. I don't want to say it because it's going to put this bias subconsciously inside of you where you're just going to focus on that. So just to keep it simple, until one of those two breaks, we are going to keep just going back and forth between them. All right. And until one of those two breaks, you're playing that range. You're buying the dip off this, you're selling the rip into that resistance. Okay. The ideal way to play this would be on the short side because the moving averages are sloped downward now, but we're waiting for that range to extend. Okay. And the last key part is volume. We need an increase in relative volume. And it's kind of simple to gauge. We had such low volume last week, not compared to the norm, right? But compared to what we had gotten the week before, that it wasn't giving us decisive action. So I don't care if we drop, if we bounce back, I just want decisive action. And that's going to be with those two levels. Okay. So a lot of the charts look like this. Apple looks the same and we'll get into that in just a second. But basically hanging on by a thread right there. And the eight EMA is trailing price up here roughly. Okay. And if you use the eight SMA, if you use a different moving average, that's fine. Just want to make it very clear that the eight EMA normally accompanies a strong trend. So if we're trending up and you can actually see it historically, let's erase that. If we're trending up, right? See how the eight EMA supported this move and led to that big rip where we got overextended. That's because normally the lower length moving averages support stronger moves. So this is a stronger move to the downside right now, which makes it even more important. Okay, so before the opening bell on Monday, take a moment to check that daily chart and see where that eight EMA is. Okay, and regularly keep checking volume throughout the week. But for now, this is the triangle that we are being given. And we are waiting for a break of one of those two areas. Okay, ideally we would play the short side here, but we'll wait. We'll see what we're given. All right, and for what it's worth, just to give you guys the list of key levels, we got the eight EMA, but we also have a couple of other key levels here. We have the Friday high. All right, 11,192. Okay, and then the 50 SMA that's nearby, but these are the only other two that I would add to your chart if you're trying to keep it simple. All right. So currently NASDAQ with a descending triangle, let's see what that gives us. If it gives us the continuation of the downside next week. All right, that would be ideal. Now for Apple, I mentioned that very briefly at the start of this video, this is something that you should not only trade, but you should use it to gauge the market movement. So it's the same thing. One thing that saved my butt last week, because there were a couple of days that were not easy, right? Specifically Wednesday and, um, Tuesday, in my opinion. Wednesday and Tuesday were not easy. Um, Tuesday, we cleaned house. Wednesday, we ended up just with a couple of daily quotas. So it was still a good day. But the main reason is because we had on our screens the NASDAQ beside the S&P with Apple on two different time frames: Apple 1, Apple 2 in our flex grid like that, right? So that we could see if the markets were breaking down side by side, we would know that this was going to be a bigger breakdown. If Apple was holding up, right, and the NASDAQ was breaking down, then we knew that the NASDAQ was likely head faking that move. So we avoided a lot of fake outs by using Apple. And that's going to be one of the reasons that you're watching it this week, even if you don't trade it. Okay, now that I've made that point, we can actually get into um, the specifics here. Apple, same exact chart as the NASDAQ. It is hanging on by a thread at 110.89. That's that previous low, okay? And this is a really simple thing, but I say this all the time in these videos. Look where volume and price are um, focused here, right? Look where the congestion is. It's all on this candle. So for any significant sell-off, we're gonna have to crack this low, right? That's 110.89, very simple. Okay, now with respects to resistance, same exact thing. It put in a lower swing high off the eight EMA. So what everybody is seeing right now, including myself, right, is that we have 
this really big ramp up, then a top. And right now the chart looks like that. Okay. Now it's very likely that we actually cracked that low because the 8 EMA rejected it, right? It rejected it. But until one of these two things break, we're just gonna have to sit pretty and wait. Okay, we can trade the range back and forth, but until that low breaks or that 8 EMA breaks, we're just hanging out. Okay, so this is actually a video where I'm telling you guys to wait instead of putting on a bunch of trades early where a lot of weeks it's been very obvious that you know we're immediately gonna continue lower or that we're gonna bounce back. Like this week, this past week, it was very obvious that we were gonna go lower, right? Question is how far? because it was a short week and it just ended up being a gradual fade to kind of match uh, a similar sell-off from the previous week, right? This upcoming week, we have not cracked that low. So your job as a trader, right? Swing trader, day trader, long-term investor, whatever, is to wait, okay? Now, Apple's still not doing well post-split, but I will mention on Tuesday, they have um, their big you know, reveal where they talk about uh, their up and coming products. It is not expected that the new iPhone will be revealed. So I'm telling you guys this from a fundamental standpoint, if Apple comes out and shocks everybody with the new iPhone, it's not expected, that would be seen as a positive. Okay, that's just a headline to look out for that could give it a boost. Normally we run into those um, big releases and then we sell off so it'll be really interesting to see how it behaves on Monday. I would actually guess that Apple is one of the stronger movers this week. Okay, I would actually guess that it's one of the stronger movers, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna move with the market. So um, at the moment, I'm waiting for a break of either of those ends. Because we have the event on Tuesday where they're gonna unveil the new iPad and the new Apple Watch, I would guess that we're gonna try to rebound a little bit more than likely to the 115 area. Okay, specifically, you can see this level in the back here. So it's 110.89 and the 8 EMA defining range. We're not going to ignore the levels in between. We still have one at 115.41. Okay, so more than likely, I think we're going to bounce there early next week. Uh, but these are still the range defining levels. Okay, so Apple mined the event on Tuesday, could create some volatility. Um, they're not expecting an iPhone release, right? Well, we're not expecting one. So if there is one released, it'll bounce back harder. Okay, now let's talk about the ticker that everybody wants to discuss here. Um, NKLA, right? Nikola Corporation. Um, basically, this stock took a beating this week, right? From the 50s to the 30s, and then it closed pretty weak on Friday uh, to the point of where a gap down is actually expected. It's expected to drop more over the weekend before we open on Monday. Okay, let me point out one thing before we talk about the short report, before we talk about um, the different executives coming back and refuting, we focus on price. Your job as a trader is to focus on price. If somebody, Bob and Susie next door are telling you, hey, invest in this stock, it's the next bi big thing, you automatically should go look at price over speculation. Right. There are a couple of speculation plays that can play out very well if it's kind of the perfect storm. But for the most part, price defines the actions that we take. OK, so NKLA, there will be a lot of people coming after me for saying this, you know, on both ends. We are going to follow price short term. So if it's saying short right now, which it is, then we're going to follow it. But I am not close minded to a bounce down the road. Right. Whether it's in a week, whether it's in a year, whether it doesn't happen, I will be open minded to trading both sides because short interest is skyrocketing. And for those of you that don't understand this concept, we actually had a good webinar with Speed Trader in the past um, where we did a little educational series and we talked about how playing high short interest stocks results in a much more aggressive move, much more reassuring move, and they're easier to trade when they do, right? Because they're extremely fast moving so nkla not saying this is what's happening next week i'm actually looking for a leg lower but down the road if it starts ramping back up be open-minded to playing that side okay now the short reports that came out this week there were a couple there was one big one that had some huge heavy accusations management responded with a very weak response like very big words very strong words but no evidence to actually back things up so 
NKLA being called kind of a fraud of a company that's just milking investors took a beating. All right. Now, from a technical perspective, because that's what you guys are watching this video for, um, it is breaking down. Right. It's not a secret. It's breaking down here under 3280. That's the previous swing low. OK, so under 3280, this stock is actually signaling a move down to roughly 29 bucks. Right? It's 2886. But let's be a little bit generous here. Let's say 29 bucks. All right. So currently, I'm still looking for a move down there. All right. Now, for any type of bounce play, because I think this is the first zone where we could see a bounce. Second one would be the 200 SMA. OK, for any type of bounce play, just as a friendly reminder, we need a strong reaction to a key level. It can't just be off of $30, right? It has to be either 29 or the 200 SMA. We also need, um, for example, if we were watching this intraday, we need a modest target, right? Where on the short side, you could let this ride because it's got a downtrend. Since a bounce would be against the trend, you would have to take profits at your target. Okay, there's no sticking around. So NKLA, I'm mainly looking for a fade to this area next week. Okay, short interest is so high, you're probably not going to be able to short common stock unless you pay an arm and a leg in fees. Um, so one thing I'll say, there are options for this ticker, literally and figuratively, there are stock options, right? You can play puts. So options will probably be pretty liquid. They'll probably also lose value pretty quickly. But um, for the most part, you can play puts. And then you can play common stock or calls if it gives a bounce off of either this, these two areas. Okay, so far it is selling off hard and has not shown signs of turning around. All right, so looking for a move down and then open-minded to a move up if it has a positive reaction off the support. All right, one day at a time for NKLA. Okay, and again, before we get into the last ticker, price over bias. Your key levels are 3280, 29, this area right here, and then the 200 day. All right, price over bias. Let that closing price decide how you react. Okay, GFI is the last ticker. And um, I mentioned this in a new scanner that I was showing some of the members in Trade with Tech. So a lot of you guys do know, but we have the Trade with Tech's paid membership. It's 50 bucks a month, where every single day we go over different picks, different tickers that we're looking at, and we call out our trades live on screen share and audio. Now, at night, a lot of times I'll go into chat and I'll put in some of the prep I'm doing for the next day. This is a ticker that came into scans, you know, a few days back. It wasn't it wasn't Friday. It wasn't Thursday. I want to say it was Wednesday night. And it came off of one of the new scanners that I shared with the chat. Basically, the scanner is looking for stocks that are consolidating after a big run. Right. That's the idea. So GFI, just to say this point blank, um, it is consolidating after a big run, right? Ran up with gold big time. And now it's just hanging out in this box. And I've actually already drawn the box for you. It's the 1211 to 1345. Okay, so that's here to here. Now, friendly reminder, these are zones, right? You might be saying, well, Ferris, it's actually 1170 something something. No, it's 1211 because the dip keeps getting bought up under that level. All right. And now it's curling up after holding it with a decent bump in relative volume. OK, so by that logic, this thing probably needs gold to make the push before it follows. But either way, it's a great sympathy play. And as long as it gets above this level, we got ourselves a decent run up in the books. Right. Our first target would be 1440. There's not all that much risk. That's at least a dollar of reward. Right. So it's presenting a pretty appealing scenario here. Again, kind of the conditional statement is we need gold to ramp. It had a little ramp last week. It sold off into it, but we need gold to ramp. So what I'm doing with GFI is I'm waiting for the breakout. Right? I've not been buying the dip um, because I just found this stock in the scanners, but I'm waiting for the breakout and that would be over 1345. OK, so you can already see I have the alert set. I set it a little bit too high, actually. Um, replace alert. Now we need to calm this down here. All right, 1345, that would be the key break for the next leg. OK, so GFI on watch and has not confirmed, right? That's why I was saying the plays from last week worked out so well, because they had already confirmed. Uh, this one has not, so set the price alert and wait for it. OK. Goldfields on watch for another leg up if it can clear that level. Okay, so just to recap, NASDAQ 
Bears won the fight and they are still winning, right? We have not seen a sign of a turnaround yet. So all the charts for the NASDAQ, Apple included, look like this. 8 EMA is trailing down. We have support below. Those are gonna be the make or break levels. Okay, NKLA mentioned a focus on price. This one is still selling off, still indicating a sell off. So until that changes, we're gonna keep shorting it. Okay, and then GFI, nice momentum stock to add to your list if it can break through 1345. All right, try to keep this video a little bit shorter, a little bit sweeter. Um, I will mention again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe because over the next couple of weeks, um, I got a lot of personal things going on, right? A lot of big things in the works at the moment. So I probably won't be as consistent with the videos, but I'm gonna do my best, right? So if they're posted on a weird day, if you have the notification turned on, you'll see it. If you don't, you might miss a video or two. Okay, so make sure you're subscribed with the notification turned on. All right. Anyways, hopefully this helps you guys bank. Uh, last week was not easy, but we still cleaned house in the chat. Had a lot, a lot of setbacks, a lot of fake outs. Uh, but as long as you're creating a plan like this over the weekend and sticking to it, you should be good. All right. Let's bank together. All right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, folks. And good luck on Monday. Take it easy.